Hello, my name is Rebecca, this is Carnivore Wellness, and today I want to talk about something a little bit different. This is more personal. This is about my latest experience with caloric restriction this past January. I don't know what it is about me and January's, but for some reason I seem to use this time of the year to take on some challenges that are counterintuitive to what my body would like. So I want to share that with you in hopes that you can perhaps avoid doing some of the things that I've done that have led to some uh, backslides in my carnivore journey progress and instead be reminded that this is a healing way of eating and that we are all at different places and uh, points in our journey and that however your body looks and um take shape at its current form is totally acceptable and a-okay. Let's back up just a little bit to last year. So 2023, around November, early November, I happened to discover my weight. Now, since I've started the carnivore diet up until this point in November, I had not stepped on a scale. I largely lived by that rule of thumb, put the scale in jail that our weight does not matter, that we shouldn't be chasing a number on a scale, that this way of eating is instead about health, wellness, and feeling our best. So I leaned into that and I decided I'm not going to step on a scale. Now, I've shared in previous videos that I have gained some weight over the course of the carnivore diet uh, in the last, I guess at this point, it's been a year and eight months or so. And so I've put on some weight, you know, it's gone a little up, a little down, but I haven't tracked it with a scale because I just didn't need that number to be playing mind games in my head. However, I accidentally discovered my weight when I went to a um, a life insurance nurse meeting. Basically, they go take your blood work. They take a couple other vital signs, you know, your blood pressure ask you a few questions about your lifestyle. And then of course they weigh you, they get you to step on a scale. So I stepped on the scale and I told the nurse, I don't want to know what I weigh. She was totally fine with that. Okay. I won't tell you. I won't mention it. I stepped off the scale, but having been out of the scale loop for quite some time, I didn't realize that this fancy new scale would continue to read out the weight on the display screen for several moments after I stepped off the scale. So I stepped off the scale thinking, you know, okay, now the screen's gonna be blank, I'm totally fine to look around the room, and I dropped my eyes to the scale, saucer wide, I realized I suddenly weigh 171 pounds. That is the highest I have weighed since I was pregnant. And that number really kind of struck me and shook me a lot because, whoa, I mean, I know, I know I've had so much healing on this way of eating. My hormones are balanced. I feel really good. I have a lot more confidence. I have great energy. I have mental clarity. You know, my digestive health has improved. I'm, I'm free of the anxiety and depression I used to have. I'm free of cravings. And I really enjoy my, my relationship with food and, and how I am able to, you know, feel great each and every day. But seeing that number on the scale being so high really struck me. And I immediately in my head started calculating, okay, if I'm 5'7 and my ideal body weight is 135, how much weight does that mean I have to lose? Okay, maybe if I don't go all the way down to 135, I still have 30 pounds to lose, you know, to try and get to 140. Anyways, I started spiraling. I'm not going to lie. I knew that that number on the scale should not define me. I know, and I knew in that moment that I have true health. I have, you know, a, a great place in, in where my health has come to, especially given where I was. And I accept that, but that number still really got in my head. So I started tracking my food. And again, I know the numbers game never helps me. Stepping on the scale, tracking you know, my food, it doesn't do well for me because if a little bit is good, then a whole lot is even better. So I started tracking and, you know, I was, I was paying attention to how much I was eating and I started dropping those calories down and I got those calories down really fast and it wasn't great. I quickly realized within the span of five days, okay, this is not the way I need to do this. You know, this is way too much restriction. And so I stopped. But when I stopped, even just in five days of kind of really restricting what I was eating, kind of letting that number on the scale get in my head and drive my eating behaviors, I, you know, once I stopped, my hunger returned. And instead of eating the two meals a day that I had kind of gradually shifted into, I suddenly needed to eat three meals a day. By the end of November, beginning of December, 
oh, it was really kind of playing in my mind. I really have a lot of weight I want to lose. You know, I'm a health coach and I need to look a certain way in order to be accepted. And I just was, you know, kind of going through these mental acrobats of why I needed to lose weight and why that number on the scale meant so much. But um, by December 22nd, I don't know why that day, but December 22nd was when I started a new little practice, new intention of tracking my calories paired with mindful eating. Now, at first, this seemed like the dream combination. I was sitting down to eat meals totally undistracted. No listening to YouTube videos or a a podcast in my ears. No watching anything on my phone. No scrolling on my phone. You know, just sitting down. No eating over the sink. You know, instead sitting down to a meal, eating bite for bite, chewing thoroughly, swallowing that food, you know, putting my fork down in between bites and really taking time to eat to give my body full time to get the, the feedback signals that it was full. It was great. It was working really well. And I was tracking alongside that. So I realized, oh, when I eat mindfully, I don't seem to need to eat as much food. You know, I'm not distractedly shoveling a bunch of food in my mouth. So I started seeing some really great benefits. I was finding that I was feeling relatively full around that, you know, 2000 calorie mark when I paired it with this mindful eating. And so then I started stepping on the scale at the gym and I was seeing that I was losing weight very quickly. I was losing about a pound and a half every four or five days, which, whoa, that should have been a sign right then and there. You need to slow your roll, little chickadee. But instead, I just thought, ooh, a pound and a half every five days. This is a really good trend. Well, that comes at a cost when we overly restrict what our bodies need when we overly restrict calories, macros, however you want to define, you know, the energy intake that you get from your food sources, it can backfire in a big way. So I've shared in the past that I have come from a background of hormonal dysregulation and not giving my body enough nourishment is the perfect recipe for, you guessed it, hormonal dysregulation. So I continued on with this, you know, weight loss. I saw that my calories were well below that 40% decrease in total daily calorie expenditure. I had done enough calculations based on the weight loss and compared with the tracking to figure out that my maintenance calories are really high. They're close to 3,500 to 4,000 calories a day. When I eat around that mark, which is interesting, I'll get back to that. But when I eat around that mark, I seem to maintain at my current level and physique. And I'm also able to, you know, have great sustained energy and hormone balance and, and good uh, results in the gym. But, you know, what's interesting is, you know, at previous times in my carnivore journey, when I would occasionally track my calories, I would do it for, you know, a couple of days just to see where I was. And I was consistently in that 3,500 to 4,000 calorie range. And I almost didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to know that that's how much I was eating. So I would quit tracking because I knew that that's too much. Well, guess what? That's actually just what my body needs for maintenance. Like my hunger was driving me to eat that amount because, that turns out that's my baseline. Then I really was cutting them way too low and I was below that 40% decrease in calories. You know, I kind of did a quick Google search. How much, you know, how much can I decrease my caloric intake for healthy weight loss? And really the upper limits is 40%. Well, I was, I was, you know, dashing it by 50%. So that's way too significant. So I upped it instead to about 2,400 to 2,600 calories. And I started being more mindful of my fat to protein ratio. I was finding that my calories were more, or that my ratio, excuse me, fat to protein was more like 60, 40. Um, And, but I really, I knew that was probably still not enough fat for hormonal regulation. So I upped it to 70, 30. Mind you, I was still doing that 70, 30, you know, 70 grams or, you know, 70% fat to 30% protein. But I was still doing that in the context of limited caloric intake. Um, And I also started easing up on my mindful eating. I was, you know, allowing myself to occasionally have an extra bite of food in the kitchen or, you know, maybe I wasn't actually putting my fork down and chewing thoroughly in between bites. You know, I just want to throw that out there. The, The mindful eating, like I started off really strong with that habit, but it has slipped up in some ways. So in fairness, just you know, adding that to the mix. The weight loss continued and it it was rapid and I was finally starting to see like, you know, as a, as a female, my, my, my body check is to look at my belly. Like, Oh, how's my belly looking? Is my belly looking flatter? Is my stomach looking slimmer? Um, and I was starting to see that. And then I reached the point in my hormonal cycle towards the end of uh, January where I just ovulated, which, you know, then after that, in the two weeks post ovulation, that's when if you're going to have PMS symptoms, if you're going to have a period of not feeling your best or 
feeling more down or, you know, more moody. It typically happens in that two-week window. Well, I hit that mark post-ovulation and all of a sudden my mood, my energy, my hormones totally crashed. And I was irritable. I was sad. I cried multiple times that week. Whereas like, I don't have that emotional dysregulation like I used to when I had hormonal imbalance. But all of a sudden I'm crying all the time. I'm having all sorts of feelings about not being good enough and not feeling good. Also, I will say that in the lead up to that time, I had noticed my sleep was starting to become disrupted. But at that point where I realized, where I was experiencing that hormonal crash with my emotions, It had been about two weeks of not getting good sleep. And I tell you, like that sleep is one of the best indicators of your hormonal health on carnivore. If your sleep is not right, then something's not right with your hormonal regulation. And so I'd kind of been pushing past that. I knew, I know that sleep is an important determinant, uh, you know, and kind of indicator of our hormonal health but I was ignoring it because I was chasing that loss on the scale. I was chasing that number on the scale. And I realized this is not going to work. I decided enough's enough. I'm not going to track. I'm going to follow my hunger. And so for the next week or so, I returned to eating 4,000 calories plus some. Some days I was hitting as high as 5,000 calories. I think there were a couple days where I was more at 5,500 calories. Okay, and like that was driven by hunger. That wasn't driven by emotional eating. During those times, I made sure to go sit and eat mindfully. Like I wanted to be sure I wasn't overeating from an emotional standpoint. And I was I was chasing hunger. And the thing is, my hunger had, you know, kind of rebounded to such a ravenous point because I'd been at this deprived state for so long. And I, I really just believe that It was my body's way of saying, look, we need these nutrients in order to re-regulate your hormones. You know, we've tanked the hormones and now it's time to go back. We need to repair. And so I ate a lot of fatty cuts of meat, added extra fat to everything and was able to, um, it was interesting when I stepped on the scale by the end of the week and I saw that number 170, instead of having this panic of, oh my God, I'm back at this high weight. This is where I was a month ago because I'd lost seven pounds in, in the span of a month. But instead of, oh, I've gained back seven pounds, what have I done? I stepped on the scale and I saw that it was said 170 and I let out a sigh of relief. And I thought to myself, finally, I have been weight restored. So even just that mental shift in no longer seeing that scale number increase and seeing that as a loss or, you know, as a, a negative, I saw it as a victory. I finally had reached a point where you know, after having to up my calories, after all that restriction for about a week or so, I found a place where my body was able to re-regulate. And guess what? My sleep immediately improved. My mood was 10 times better. And I was able to, you know, I was motivated. I'm able to show up for other people in my life and and be the person that I want to be. And I noticed my performance at the gym got much better. So during that time of restricting, I was barely able to keep my the weights that I'd worked up to and barely able to hit the reps like some days I couldn't hit the reps and I was even backing down the weights in some areas which that's another sign I was losing muscle that was I wasn't getting enough nutrition so I had gone I went from seeing losses in the gym to all of a sudden after you know recalibrating my body and getting back up to that 170 giving my body ample nutrition I'm back to seeing gains in the gym. I've upped the amounts that I am leg pressing. I've upped the amounts that I'm squatting and bench pressing. And, you know, I'm telling you, the pull-ups are a little hard with those extra seven pounds on the body. But, like, I'm able to get those reps in. And I, I think that is so much more important than the number on the scales. I've really come into this new phase, I guess, uh, or stage of my carnivore journey. You know, I'm a year and eight months into it. And really and truly, I am done with the restricting. I am done with trying to find ways of making my body smaller when it very clearly wants to be at this size at this point in my journey. I come from a background of a disordered relationship with food. I have a background of you know, hormonal dysregulation and the anxiety and depression. And I don't want those things to come back into my life. I love living craving free. I love living in a body that is hormonally balanced where I don't have PMS symptoms every month, where I don't 
feel ragey or moody or irritable, you know, at various times in my hormonal cycle. I really love living life without anxiety and depression holding me back and making me second guess myself and keeping me from being, you know, present with the people I love. So I will take this in this size body over a restricted malnourished body any day of the week. And I've just reached this point in my journey. This is my, I would say probably third time, you know, really kind of going down this restrictive pathway on carnivore. There's so much information out out there about, oh, you'll get great body recomposition. You'll be in the best shape of your life. Your body will shed the excess it doesn't need. And I do believe, believe those things are true. And so many people find significant weight loss on this way of eating. However, I started this way of eating pretty much at my ideal body weight, but in a very undernourished, malnourished way. I was riddled with anxiety and hormonal dysregulation. And I am now at a point where I have that peace of mind back. I have that centeredness and that grounding, and I feel so good. Why would I trade this good feeling for a slightly slimmer physique? I still am well within what I believe is a a healthy body. You know, I, I am able to perform at the gym. I am able to, you know, go out and run several miles without having to, done tons of cardio training. I I maintain a level of health and fitness that feels good. So why should I let a number on the scale or, you know, the measurements of my waist circumference dictate, you know, my health? Because I know what happens each and every time I restrict, I see hormonal dysregulation. And gosh, I've shared before, I'm a stubborn person. I think a lot of us sometimes find ourselves in that camp. And so it can be so tempting to want to chase results and, and tweak this or tweak that. But I'm telling you, the beautiful thing about this carnivore way of eating is you don't have to try and push and pull all these levers to tweak things. You can let your body be as it is. Your body is going to reach a state of being healed. And I firmly believe I live in a healed body and this is what it looks like. That may change in a few years. Who knows? Maybe my body will be more accepting of the fact that I'm going to continue to give it enough that, you know, nourishment for hormonal regulation. But until my body's able or ready to do differently, I'm going to continue eating in alignment with my hunger and I'm going to continue to be the size that my body decides it needs to be, not what society decides it needs to be. Okay, so this is just an update on me, my story where I am personally, I'm very curious if this resonates with you. I know so many people have seen significant weight loss on carnivore. If that is you, I am so sincerely happy for you. That is amazing. And you deserve to feel so good in that victory. But if you are still struggling with weight loss, some vanity pounds, like maybe you're within like 20, 30 pounds of your ideal body weight, but you just can't get there for, you know, no matter what you're doing, maybe just reframe it. Maybe take a different look. Maybe perhaps this is where your body needs to be for a while. Maybe this is what your healed body looks like right now. Accept it. Don't keep fighting it. And definitely don't restrict because I'm telling you from my own experience, that restriction does way more harm than good. I It sets me back every time. And yet I've continued to repeat it. So this is my also, you know, public accountability piece to you and to everyone else. I am not going to restrict anymore. I'm going to continue to let hunger be my guide because I firmly believe on this carnivore diet, hunger is your guide. So that it guides me to eat. So I'm going to eat. And until, you know, my body decides otherwise, this is the way I'm going to be. So how are you? Where are you in your carnivore diet journey? Do you have the body composition that you want? Or are you still seeking to see, you know, some some further changes? So I'm just curious, where are you? No judgment. I just want to know because, you know, we all have different experiences and stories on this carnivore way of eating. And when we don't get the same results that our peers get, sometimes it can be incredibly frustrating and difficult and challenging to navigate. That's one of the many reasons that I've started the Carnivore Wellness Community. So I've created this community. It's available on the Mighty Networks platform. I'll put that link below. Essentially, meat-based eaters can come together, share their stories, share their experiences, their journeys, share their ups and downs. You know, it's not always great to have to look at the scale and realize that it's higher than you want it to be. But there are ways that we can support one another through that and still remind one another that this way of eating is for health and healing first. So if you want to join that community, that link is below. I'd love to have you there in that space. And if you want to take it a step further and have increased accountability, support, and encouragement, I host three live Zoom calls each week. Those meetings are essentially small group coaching sessions, you know, accountability sessions. It's a time for you to show up, share what's going on in your life, get some feedback if that's what you want, 
or just simply seek understanding and support from your fellow meat-based eaters. Uh, that link is available as well, and I'll post that down below. So little different, you know, kind of video style than I normally do, but I just wanted to share with you what is going on with me personally. You know, it's great when we can share all this, uh, you know, carnivore-facing information that helps people get started, but I think there's real value in our individual stories, and so I wanted to share that with you today, and I would love to hear your individual story as well. Please come join me in that carnivore wellness community where we can exchange those stories and experiences together. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, if you occasionally want to hear more about my story, be it weight gain, weight loss, or just, you know, this existing in this, this space, um, please like and subscribe. I would love to continue to share these kind of videos with you in the future. So thank you so much for spending this time with me, and I will see you in the next video.